Are you planning on picking up a ship or maybe two during this upcoming Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, IAE, November 18th? If so, then this video is just for you. By the time you're finished watching, you will be prepared to get the most out of every penny that you spend and every fleet adjustment that you make. Before we continue, do me a solid and hit the like button and subscribe. Let's begin. So to my left and your right is the table of contents. We'll start by breaking down the pledging terminology and we'll follow that up with some opportunities that you will absolutely want to take advantage of and some pitfalls that you will want to definitely avoid. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Please allow me to interject the following first. You do not need to pledge more than your base package to play this game. Please understand that all ships at some point will be earnable in game. Now let's continue. To start, we'll need to break down the pledge store terminology. Understanding these will be the foundation to leveraging the tips that I share later in the video. Game packages. These are pledges that give access to the game or more specifically, the persistent universe. To be clear, this does not give access to Squadron 42, as that is a different purchase altogether. The game packages always contain a ship or a vehicle, or sometimes multiple ships or vehicles. You will be able to determine this via the existence of the Star Citizen digital download on the package description card. Standalone ships or vehicles. These are pledges for single ships or vehicles that do not contain access to the game. You will also be able to determine this via the absence of the Star Citizen digital download on the description card. War Bond. The War Bond pledge is a pledge that has a restriction on purchasing. The purchasing guideline is that you will be required to spend 100% new cash to acquire the pledge. The benefit of Warbond pledges is that they are cheaper at face value than their standalone counterparts, and they generally come with LTI insurance, though LTI insurance is not always guaranteed. You can, however, be confident that Warbond pledges will generally have better insurance than the standalone counterpart. CCU, or Cross Chassis Upgrade. This is an item by itself that represents an upgrade from one ship or vehicle to another. It is important to understand that this is its own item. When you choose to upgrade from one ship to another, you first secure the CCU, then it must be applied. So this makes it effectively a two-step process to upgrade the ship. Let's walk through an example. Here I have an MPUV that I want to upgrade to a Greycat STV. As you can see on this screen, I first select what I want to CCU from, and then what I want to CCU to. Once I've made my selection, I can then put that item in my cart. The CCU item is in the cart, and this is what I am paying for with new cash or credits from my account. Once I make the purchase, it will show up in my hangar, and then I can proceed to apply it at which point the MPUV standalone package will be upgraded to contain an STV in place of the MPUV. Also, and most importantly, whatever ship you upgrade to takes on the perks tied to the original package. Buyback pledges. When you melt a pledge or CCU from it as demonstrated moments ago, it generally becomes available for buyback in your account. If you ever want to repurchase that item, you can at any time. Emphasis on any time. It is worth noting that only original pledges can be eligible as a buyback pledge. More on this later. Warbond Upgrade. These are rare and special pledges that allow you to CCU to another ship where you have to spend 100% new cash to get the upgrade which typically has better perks tied to the pledge, like LTI insurance, which we'll get to momentarily. Melting and store credit. Melting is when you trade in a pledge for store credit. 
Store credit is as it sounds in that it is credits you can use to secure another pledge or items in the store. Insurance and LTI. Insurance is also as it sounds, a gameplay related perk applied to the ownership of ships and vehicles. Once implemented in the final game, insurance will be used to insure your ships and vehicles. Though next to nothing is known about how insurance will work when the game is released, I am very confident it will work as we suspect that it will and that it will govern how we recover our ships that are destroyed or damaged. It will also govern how much we pay to recover or repair the ship. Given how little has been confirmed, however, the rest, including what I have just said, is pure speculation. On to huge opportunities. Now that we know what the terms are and what they mean, let's discuss how you can leverage the pledge system to your benefit. Number one, chaining Warbond upgrade CCUs. So remember those Warbond upgrades discussed earlier? Well, for the past couple years, CIG has set these up in a way that we can leverage them to acquire other ships for a potentially large discount. Allow me to explain. Again, Warbond CCUs allow you to upgrade from an existing standalone pledge to another, similar to your normal CCU process. However, the big difference is that you have to pay cash for the upgrade. No credit can be used, and it generally comes with better insurance than your standard non-Warbond pledges. The biggest benefit is that Warbond is always cheaper at face value. Though not all give LTI, most, if not all, do give 10-year insurance. Be on the lookout for these during the event. The best way to plan out your chain upgrade is to first know what your target ship costs to pledge, then wait until the last manufacture day before planning out your chained upgrade. If done right, you will realize a discount that is not available through any other method. Stay tuned to my channel and I will share some upgrade chain ideas once the event starts and progresses through. Number 2. Multi-Ship Game Packages this opportunity is more for concierge, given the fact that the most multi-ship game packages are only available for purchase by those in concierge. Though multi-ship game packages are not created equal for a few reasons, you will find that there are some decent money-saving opportunities when pledging for these packages. Normally, these packages are cheaper than buying the ships contained within individually. If you are one to know which ships you plan to keep and never melt, these packages are the absolute way to go if you want to maximize your fleet's value versus cost. Finally, the CCU buy your desired ship later opportunity. I know that's a very long phrase. <laughs> For anyone who may not be prepared to secure all of the ships that you want during the event, there is something that you can do to reserve the ability to purchase later, at a time of your own choosing. All ships are made available during the IAE event yearly. However, many are only available during this time of year. As a result, under normal circumstances, you can only pick up your desired ship around this time, and would have to wait until next year if you missed the opportunity. There is a way around this. Now we spoke earlier about CCUs being their own item. As a result, you can purchase a CCU and apply it at a later date. So this means that if there is a ship that you want, but are unable to, for whatever reason, pick it up during the IAE event, you can effectively reserve an option to purchase later after the event on your own terms. I will demonstrate how. But to achieve this, you only need to purchase CCUs from ships that you know will always be on sale throughout the year and not just during the IAE event. For example, ships like the Cutlass or the Avenger Titan. You can even utilize more expensive ships like the Mole. Now let's demonstrate. On the screen, we can see that the Avenger Titan is available today. And at the time of this recording, the IAE event is yet to begin. And I can pick this up throughout the year. For the best demonstration, let's assume that I do not already own an Avenger Titan. 
Also, for the example, I am interested in buying a Crusader A1 Spirit. Let's now go set up a CCU for this upgrade that we can apply at a later date. Let's select Ship Upgrade. Then we'll select All Ships, not My Ships, and search for the Titan. Now on the right side, let's choose the A1 Spirit. At the bottom, you can see a warning that I do not already own the Avenger Titan. You can also see the cost of the CCU, which is the difference between the two ship prices. We're assuming that for whatever reason, I am not able or not ready to spend 175 today for the Spirit. All I need is 120 to secure the CCU. Once I purchase this CCU, I can apply it at any date in the future, unless CIG changes this policy, of course. This leads me to a list of caveats. Number one, the ships that are always available have terrible insurance. This is reason enough to reconsider, in my opinion, but if you are one of those who do not care much about LTI or the higher tier insurances, this is a great way to give yourself more time to acquire the ships that you want. Number two, as mentioned briefly, CIG can change this policy at any time. The good news is that you can then melt the CCU if that does happen. Now, no matter what you do, please pledge responsibly as you can earn almost all ships within the game even today. Now on to the pitfalls to avoid. As this is an elaborate pledge system, there are absolutely some traps that you can fall into if you are not paying attention. Even long tiered backers have failed for some of these, so please pay attention when pledging or making changes to your fleet. Number one, the CCU buyback pitfall. When you CCU to another ship, if you ever decide to melt that package, please know that only the original pledge will be available as a buyback option. Meaning, if you upgrade your Avenger Titan to an MSR and then eventually melt that package, you will only see the original Titan pledge in your buyback options. Number two, the buyback price protection pitfall. When melting packages, in the past you could rest in the fact that the price to buy back the pledge would never change, even if the ship or package price in the store changed. This is no longer the case as of a year or so ago. Any buyback pledge you have is subject to price changes in the store overall. So all this to say, please avoid sitting on buybacks if you can help it. If you plan to reacquire a buyback eligible pledge, please consider any potential price changes that may be coming down the line for that pledge or ship. Number three, the multi-ship game package CCU pitfall. This one is mostly for those of you who are concierge, but when buying multi-ship packages, Please know that though you can upgrade individual ships in the package, you cannot melt individual ships within that package and will instead have to melt the entire package first. This is important if you have upgraded one or more ships in that package and then later decide that you no longer want a specific ship within. This is also important the higher the cost of the ship you upgrade to. The higher you go, the less options you have to upgrade further. All of this to say, be sure you want to keep the ships you upgrade to within a package, because if not, you will have to nuke the entire thing in order to reorganize, or be forced to settle by keeping a ship that you do not want. Well, that's pretty much it for me. If any of you have any other ideas or if I might have missed something, please share them in the comment section below with your fellow citizens. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Thank you all so very much for watching. I will absolutely see you in the next video.